Welcome to the seventh annual Tri-State Megabox Tournament of Champions. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, look at this. Look at that! He got it! Spread Eagle for a spin! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Looks good! That's good to go! That's good! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi once again, everybody, and welcome to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. And this is it, the finals, the championship match of our 1995 Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. We're so glad you could join us. Doug Brown here along with Dan Murphy, and we are left with our top two seeds. Only the second time in the seven-year history of the tournament that that's happened. But uh, they deserve it. They bowl well enough to get here, and uh, it's like two generations here. As I mentioned at the close of last week, uh, Paul's my generation, and uh, Chris is somewhere in between. <laughs> Not yours, well, but, me you know. Me birth, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere in between it's, there. It's an interesting matchup. Well, let's meet our two bowlers and talk about our championship match here today. First of all, our number two seed coming off a win last week in the semifinals from Haverhill, Massachusetts, Chris Sargent. Okay, Chris averaging 131, has a high triple of 530, his roll-off. Uh, or his qualifying score when he won his ladder championship was 421. And last week, to beat Gary Carrington, he rolled a 396, including a very critical double strike in the third game that helped him open up a bit of a lead and cruise on to the win. And he will face our number one seed. The record is really astounding. We talk about it every year, but once again, our number one seed from Hopedale, Massachusetts, Paul Berger. And uh, he's, uh, he shows up every, he's like you said, a perennial. <laughs> he shows up every year for this. A high single of 220, has a high triple of 500, his qualifying score 454. I don't know what's more amazing, the fact that Paul Berger has qualified for this tournament seven years in a row, or the fact that this is the fourth time that he has come in as the number one seed. Yeah, it's amazing. He just, uh, he rises to the occasion, and uh, he got beat earlier in a championship match, and uh, he turned around and got the next roll off, and as you see, one big. All right, we're going to have a lot of money on the line here today. Let's just review it briefly. $600 to the runner-up, $1,500 to the winner today. We also have bonus money on hand, of course, Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan, providing uh, bonus money for consecutive marks for both bowlers. And also we have our bonus ball contest for $50 and a couple of brand-new sets of bowling balls. That'll be at the end of the hour. But we have three games of candle pin bowling to get to before that to decide it all. The season championship here on Stars and Strikes we will be back. Paul Berger and Chris Sargent to get this match going right after these messages. Don't go away. Well, we started this whole thing four weeks ago. Our number six seed, John Plant, threw a 392 to knock off Jack Quinn. John Plant had even bigger things in store the following week as he beat our number four seed, Tom Morgan, in a terrific match. Tom Morgan with a 191 middle game, but John Plant came from 35 pins down to beat him with a 439. John could not make it three in a row, though. He lost to Gary Carrington, our number three seed, two weeks ago. Gary rolling a big 456, including a triple strike near the end and a 170 game. But then last week, Gary Carrington came up short against Chris Sargent, our number two seed. Chris with the 396, and he is ready to get this championship match started against number one seed Paul Berger. Nine for Chris, 19 opening pair. 
now here once again, Paul Berger. Qualifying score, 454 that he rolled on Christmas Day. We've talked a lot about that match. One of the best matches ever here on the Winds of New England. Paul threw a 454, but he needed almost all of them because Glenn Shattuck, his opponent, threw a 439. That match was back on Christmas Day. Might have seen it a couple of weeks ago. We reran it. And I dare say we'll probably rerun it again in the summer. Missed it. And Paul opens with a 10. But Paul has been in the Tournament of Champions all seven years. As we mentioned at the top, this is the fourth year that he's been the number one seed. Of course, Paul would be the first one to mention that he's only won the Tournament of Champions once. But pretty tough competition. Always in this event. Spare up. The year that Paul won it was 1990. He beat Al Cloutier. This is the third time in the last four years he's been in the finals. He lost in the finals in 92 to Mike Morgan and in 93 to Peter Flynn. Chris Sargent has the 5, 7, and 10. With some wood. Chris's fans are <laughs> directing the wood themselves. And it seems to work. I think he's got to catch a little bit of that right wood and the five pin. Wood to the left has a chance to take the. Oh, he's going to try to split the. Got it. Uh, what do I know? Let's just watch. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's watch it again. But I would have made it my way, too. In fact, I would have went quicker with my. <laughs> nice shot by Chris. Something we talked about last weekend, that ball was a little heavy on the head pin, but he was able to crash through. And, and The name of the game is to hit the head pin with that first ball. If you're going heavy, you just got to stay with it because eventually they start breaking up. And he pushed that ball a little bit. And he missed it to the left. Lost his balance, too, a little bit right at the line. And the 10. Matches like this, you, if you have the opportunity, you don't want to miss any of them. And then maybe get some of those splits that you don't believe you're going to get. And that's when you have to throw the big score. But you can't miss the uh, ones you're expected to get. Five on the fill for Paul Berger. Paul, interesting thing about Paul's record here in the Tournament of Champions is he's been here every year, which is an accomplishment in and of itself. He's won it only one time, but he's rolled only one match each year. And there's a big strike. And Paul uh, always mentions to me, uh, every time we see him here, that he wishes he had just won more matches during the Tournament of Champions, but... Same thing now. Got to get here first, and he's the only one that has come close to doing what he did. Neither of these bowlers waste any time up there either. Again, full, but he carries it for a strike. Watch how full this ball is when it goes in on the head pin. Just tripping the four. Paul Berger now working on his strike in the fourth, looking for two. Oh, got three. The one, five, and eight. Uh, not quite what I meant. <laughs> Oh, look out. Seven on the strike. Paul takes the lead. And the nine. 59, four pin advantage. 
So make it seven years in a row for Paul Berger. Nobody else has been in the Tournament of Champions more than three times. We've had several guys now who've made it three times, but Paul is the only one up there in the uh, annual category. For the spare? No. Chance for Chris to take the lead. Working on the strike. Chris working on a strike. The crowd will tell you. Looked pretty good when it started. Five, eight, and ten. No wood. Going to try to split the five in the eight. Eighty-two through seven. Chris last week had fourteen marks, including five strikes. Had the big double strike in the third game that helped give him the lead for good. Kicks out the five pin. The seven will stay. Spare? No, that'll be a nine box. That is a nine box. And two opens for Paul Berger to work on. Not quite for Paul. Paul Berger from Hopedale, Massachusetts, just outside of Worcester, south of Worcester, little town that always seems to have great high school basketball teams. Mm. Paul and his wife Paula have uh, two sons, Damon and Alex. Paul is the director of corporate purchasing at Stratus Computer. I'm gonna shoot at the five and nine and all kinds of Play of a wood out in front. And the spare. That is mark number three for Paul Berger. Two marks up till now for Chris Sargent. Chance at a third here. Three, six, nine, and ten. Oh, yeah. Spare in the ninth. Well, plays the wood effectively there. Moves everything from left to right with those four pins, the three, six, nine, and ten. An eight fill. Look out. Slip it by. This has gone by the two and the four pins. Picked out just the four left of two. He missed a two pinner there and he missed a seven pin. Could have three spares. It's a 117 opening game. I'm sure he's not happy with that, but right now, Paul Berger needs anything. Uh, three or more. Three will give him the tie. Anything over three. Like four. <laughs> we'll give him the lead temporarily, but he's opposite a spare eight. Seven. So just 21 pins in that exchange. Spare four, seven. Down by 10 now. Finds himself, Paul Berger. Gets 
one extra pin. Still has the three, four, and seven with wood. Yeah, that's a tough one because the problem is a two pin. If you want to go to the left, it's, the wood's going to go by the two. Almost have to go right. And it's going real low. Enough to catch the two, but nope. not the seven. Well, you can gain two and count. The lead will either be eight or nine. It'll be nine. 108 for Paul Berger. 117 for Chris Sargent. Two games to go to decide the season championship. The 1995 Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions continues after these messages. Welcome back and our last reminder of the season about our bonus ball contest. We'll have $50 in the jackpot at the end of the show. Obviously, this is our last new show of the season for Sundays. But uh, if you'd like to send us your postcards over the summer, we do hang on to them and uh, get them ready for the fall. You can send them to Dan Murphy's house. No, <laughs> just kidding. Send them to Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. And when you do send them in, be sure and send regular size cards only and include your name, your full address, and the number from 1 to 10. Paul Berger starts game two. Four horsemen plus the nine. Oh, corner pins. Even though this is our last uh, traditional last show of the season, in singles competition. Don't forget that we have one more big show coming up for you on Saturday, May the 27th. This Saturday, our final new show of the year is the Men's All Events New Hampshire State Championship. That'll be Saturday at noon from the Londonderry Bowling Center. And we hope you'll join us for that one. Four, seven, eight, and ten. And again, the seven pin costs him the spare. And it's nine. Been pretty quiet here so far in terms of pinfall for both bowlers, but the crowd is ready to explode. Should the bowlers explode? Chris Kick out on the four pin. Now on lane thirty one. Going for the double, a little light this time. The two, five, and eight. And always a problem with the sleeper in the back, the eight pin. Got to be a little heavy on the three. A two pin, I should say. Yeah, and there's the opportunity. Two full, you leave the five. It's nine fill on the strike. And 10. Increasing the lead to 19. I heard somebody in the crowd say that a way to grind. This means grind it out. You get the spare, you get the strike, you try to put a decent fill, don't leave anything standing. Meanwhile, Paul Berger, like he threw a pretty good ball there, but could not kick out the extra pin. So that makes this, needless to say, a much more difficult shot. The four, six, and seven. Paul has a chance today to become the first two-time winner of the Tournament of Champions. We've had six different winners in the six years of the tournament so far. Good nine-pin drop for Paul, lead the four. Spare for Paul. All four of his marks have been over on lane 31. He's yet to solve lane 32. Chris 
Sargent with another bomb of a first ball. This one leaves the 10 pin, though. <laughs> Heard somebody say only nine? And the spare. Pin that time. Take six. Four horsemen left. One, two, four, and seven. Lisa Wood right behind the head pin. Nope. Six. All right, give me all six. It's an eight box for Chris Sargent. We take a break. Just about to the halfway point, our championship match here on Stars and Strikes. We'll be back in a minute. Paul Berger working on a spare. Trailing in the match by 24, but that'll change with this fill, which is five. Two, four, nine, ten. No wood left on the plate. Nope. And the ten for Paul. But he has yet to mark on lane 32. can't kick out that extra pin. Four, six, and ten. But wood in front. Possibilities here. Oh, he missed the other piece. Nope. Wanted to catch a little piece of that piece in front of the four pin. Didn't do it. Ten box, two of them for Paul Berger. Openings for Chris Sargent. He leads by 19. Pin, but maybe it wasn't a good thing. Eight, nine, ten with wood coming. Well, that piece of wood on the left will help, but I don't know if it's going to make it easy. I think I might go out the nine pin and snap that piece of wood off the ten pin and come back, but. That's what he tried. But now watch Doug's way and watch this pin fly over where the nine and ten was. No. Nope. Well, Doug, you would have missed it. Just wasn't there. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but you probably would have hit it differently and made it. <laughs> well, here we are, halfway through the match, and neither bowler's been able to put back-to-back -to -back marks together yet. Yeah. That's why we haven't talked at all about bonus money. <laughs> And missing the object pin, which is the head pin in that case, and so he'll be open. In fact, to uh, lose one or two pins in count to Paul Berger. Make it three in those three boxes. So the lead now is 16 for Chris Sargent. We're waiting for one ball to rise the occasion here and take control of this match. Well, Paul got a little bit more off the head pin that time. Three and five left. Cut the head pin thinner than he had been before, and there is his first mark on lane 32. Conversely, Chris Sargent only has one mark on lane 31. Thin hit again, good mixing action. It's an eight pin drop on the spare. The three and 10 left, and a nice piece of wood behind the three. Make a little concerned with one just to the left. 
Gets by that, two in a row. First time in the match for either bowler. So Paul Berger marks two up on the board, and Chris Sargent will try to answer now. Not for a minute, he was going to end up with three in the back row again. I wanted that 10 pin to go down, but. Seven and ten with Wood. No, wow. The pin and the ball missed. And that's a nine. Here's the spare attempt. A little bit farther down where the wood two piece of wood meet probably was the place. Lead now just seven pins and he's opposite a spare by Paul Berger. Nine drop. Leaves the six pin. And the spare in the eighth. And Paul Berger now with a bonus money try, two marks in a row, working on a spare. You see what he has done here throughout the years. Oh, big drop again, make it $25, strike on spare. His second strike. Off target that time. Yeah, not happy with himself by, for missing the head pin. But it's on a strike. He has another ball. One, two, four, and nine. And again, he misses it. And it's 10, 130 for Paul, 238 after two. Reminder that even though we're uh, getting ready to leave for our summer vacation here on Stars and Strikes. Of course, Park Place Lanes will still be here during the summer. Absolutely. For your candle pin bowling fun. And when you come in, be sure and stop into the Willow Tree North restaurant located right inside Park Place Lanes. The Willow Tree North. It's where the crew eats. Great food, great service, great prices. For two in a row, Chris Sargent makes it. New chance, first chance for bonus money. And also a chance here to preserve his lead going into the third and final game. Oh, big strike on spare, and he has bonus money. $25 in bonus money from Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. There was never a doubt about that strike, and that was a huge one in the 10th. Looking for more? Not this time. There's a chance for more bonus money, though. If he were to make this shot. Not quite. It'll be an eight, Phil. A 136 for Chris Sargent. He does maintain his lead. In fact, he extends it a little bit. Chris Sargent by 15 with one game to go as we wrap it up on the Tournament of Champions with the third and final game after these words. Here we go, final game. Here's your leader by 15. A big hop down there. His adrenaline is flowing, and he's just charging the line. He's going to try to stay within himself. He's up on that one. He's back on the head pin, but that's all he got with that ball. And it's seven. Each bowler got on the board with bonus money there at the end of game two, $25 a piece. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan.
Come wow. to Salem and Save, Route 97, Main Street, Salem, New Hampshire. Thanks, uh, as always, to Emmett Horgan and the gang at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan for their continued support here on Stars and Strikes, and especially for their bonus money program this season. I know the bowlers got a big kick out of it, and we hope you did too. Well, two open frames for Paul Berger to work on, and just 14 pins, uh, 15 pins as well. Five ten. Let's see where the wood settles down. Let's see if he pinches the wood with the five pin. Uh, tried the left wood. That's just a little too deep for him. No, nope, got a pin here because uh, it's opposite of seven. Cuts the lead to thirteen. In for the spare. Oh. oh, and Paul slips by. Both bowlers have missed some today. And of course, you always remember the last one. You don't remember the first one. That's and a nine. Nine box. Does pick up another pin and count, though. The lead is down to 12 with eight boxes to go. Squeezing the ball just a little tighter, I think, coming down the stretch. Well, we have noticed over the years, and we do tend to notice these things, that the uh, scores in the championship match here have not been as high as scores in the rest of the tournament. And certainly, we've had some big scores in this tournament. trying to put some offense together here today, but there is big money on the line, and of course, the title is season champion, and... A little extra pressure, oh, and Chris misfires Christmas. again. So both bowlers feeling a little, a little tight here. That's a 10. Paul Berger on the head pin. Can't break up the split, though. How many splits have we seen today? A lot. Well, talk to the bowlers. They'll probably say too many. <laughs> but he's got a shot at making this with the wood in between. Oh, he missed the object pin. Oh, the ball just oh. missed. Coming back. Missed the three pin. You can tell just by Paul's uh, expression and body language that uh, <laughs> he's a little bit frustrated. But he does gain two more in count. The lead is down to 10. I'm sure he's happy about that, but he's also saying uh, he gave me four open frames to work on and I wasn't able to put any marks up. And he's got one more chance in the fourth. Full on the oh, head pin and another split. Nine box for Paul, and we will take a timeout. What is it, do you suppose? Next mark wins? We'll find out. We're going to settle this thing. 11 pins the lead right now for Chris Sargent with six boxes to go on Stars and Strikes. The crowd urging the bowlers on here. A very tight match with six boxes to go. A mark in this third game yet. Uh, I think he'd probably have that like to have that wood stay away because I don't think it it would help. And have a clear shot at six, nine, and ten. No, he's oh yes. 
That ball broke a little bit sharper to the right. I thought he went by the six pin. Here it is. Just caught the six. Spare in the fifth. It's nine marks for Chris. Went full on the head pin. Takes seven. And it's got an angle and a piece of wood. The ball's going to fly that way. It just depends on where it ends up. It may fly over the seven pin or get something off the left, a right side wall. Oh, he's too high. Oh, and he got it. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. He was right on the cap. And that ball stayed in play. And actually, the ball knocked the seven pin down. Right here. Oh, didn't see it all, but that's what happened. Two in a row for Chris Sargent. Put a ring around that one. Oh, all cannot answer. Eighteen pins at the advantage now for Chris Sargent. Still got a long ways to go. Oh, look at that. There's a break. There's the secret for Paul Berger. That might have been the worst first ball he's thrown today, and it turns into a strike. Watch where this ball hits. Square on the three pin for the strike. Maybe that's the secret. Maybe they're hitting the head pin too much. <laughs> that's eight marks for Paul. Chris Sargent with an opportunity for bonus money here. Working on a spare. It's five. Well, the advantage goes back to Paul Berger. If he was going to get up and throw a legitimate strike, you know, sometimes when you steal one like that, you bury the next one and get the double. Oh, look at this. Oh, what a shot. That deserves 25. What a funny shot for Chris Sargent. We'll have another look. Wanted one more to go, but he'll settle for eight. And another mark. Four in a row, $25 more for Chris Sargent. And he's making it very difficult for Paul Berger right now. Paul working on a strike. Time to throw the double. No, not this time. Oh, missed the head pin on the other side. Try and see if it would work again. <laughs> oh, does he have the oh. spare? No. It's a 10. So right now, the lead is 22 with three boxes to go. And Paul would do himself yeah, he's a big favor here if he right. put up a mark. He's give himself a chance. He needs a mark here. And let's look at this. Five, wow. seven, and ten. Oh. <laughs> seven pin has cost him more marks today. Paul, I'm sure, is thinking right about now that he would trade some of the many wins he's had here for a win, <laughs> another win here in the tournament. He gets a ten. Chris Sargent. With an opportunity to force Paul into a double strike situation here. Chris has $50 in bonus money in this sequence, four marks in a row. Two of them very, very difficult shots. Five again. For five in a row. Yes! $5 more. Now, sometimes that's all it takes is one lucky spare, and he seemed like a new bowler after he got that break on, the, on that three-pin spare, and then he cut a one over, and he's just making every kind of shot now. Trying for six in a row now. Oh, I see some wood flying when he throws this ball. The six-seven? No, 
No. Either end, but down the center was no good. Nine for Chris, 125, 378. Ballberger needs lots of strikes. Right. He needs a strike right here or it's over. <laughs> Couldn't throw any better ball than that. That does it. Chris Sargent is our 1995 Tournament of Champions winner. The spare for Paul Berger. By the way, Chris wrapped up the day with an even $100 in bonus money, but he will also take $1,500 as the overall winner here. And for Paul Berger, another superb match during the regular season to get here, but a further disappointment in the Tournament of Champions, and I know he must be feeling disappointed, but... Well, you know, one fellow, uh, one of my television debuts, I didn't do very well, lost the match, and one fellow said to me, a veteran bowler said, you know, before you can lose here, Dan, you have to get here. And that's what Paul has done year after year after year, so... Paul with an opportunity for bonus money here now. If he fires a strike on his last ball, And instead, it's just four. The spread eagle, 117. And a total of 355 for Paul Berger. And he congratulates the champion, Chris Sargent, with a 378. We'll be back with the bonus ball contest and to tell you about the New Hampshire Men's All Events Championship match coming up on Saturday right after this timeout. And welcome back to Park Place Lanes. Doug Brown here along with Dan Murphy. Seven years of the Tournament of Champions, and we've now had seven different winners. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, the 95 edition was uh, second to none. It was enjoyable all the way through. Uh, these bowlers kind of struggled here, but the match was close, and uh, hats off to Paul to make it seven years in a row, and congratulations to Chris. All right, I'll get a couple more comments from you, Dan, before we leave in a minute. But first of all, let's bring up our two bowlers, our runner-up, Paul Berger, who once again has... Uh, Raced the Tournament of Champions with his presence seven years in a row, and uh, I know that isn't the check you wanted, and we have this conversation uh, uh, from time to time, it seems. Yeah. But uh, again, Chris bowled well, and he was able to get the marks together when he had to. Yeah, Chris bowled real well, uh, especially in the last string, the last five boxes there, he made some great shots. My opportunity was the first four boxes, and, and I couldn't come up with the marks uh, at that point, and then he said goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> like, we've talked about how difficult it is not only to get here, but then to go through the process to get to the Tournament of Champions and, and then to win the whole thing. And, and certainly, I guess you could testify to that. You did win it back in 1990, but uh, still nobody's been able to win it twice. The field is usually very, very tough. Well, well, we'll try another year and we'll see what happens. It's, it has been a little frustrating the last few, but uh, Chris bowled well and... Uh, I'll take my money and run. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks very much, Paul. Congratulations again for getting here. We appreciate it, as always. And now Chris Sargent will throw the final ball of the season here on Stars and Strikes as we go for a last winner in our bonus ball contest to end the year. $50 and a couple of brand new bowling sets of bowling balls from Paramount Industries on the line. Well, it's a three. Chris was saving that. Let me look for a three. <laughs> you could spend some time and look in there. You probably wouldn't find one. But you never know. Let's see. Oh, it's not a match, Chris. It's an eight. Francis Flanders just went way off the board and guessed eight. Uh, Francis from Milford, New Hampshire, will be receiving a consolation prize. But uh, no consolation prize for you. $1,500 as the season champion. Congratulations. Slide right in here. And, uh, well, you had a lot of people rooting you on. And... Uh, I think they helped you there. Somebody had to get uh, a couple of marks there in the third game, and you were able to put some together. Yeah, it helps when the crowd's really going you know, <laughs> nice and loud. Really get you going good. Yeah. It was uh, it was really there for, for either of you to take in the third game, and you were able to uh, take advantage of the break. I think Dan mentioned this, too. You, you took advantage of that break on the, on the three-pin spare that you made, and then a moment later you made a terrific shot on that cut shot on the five-pin leave, and uh, you just took off from there. Yeah, I knew I couldn't open too many times against him, and uh, the marks I missed... I thought for sure he was just going to come right on by me. So I had to take advantage of it. So. Wait till Dad hears about this. He'll be proud. Yeah, I guess he will. <laughs> Congratulations, Chris. Thank Thanks you. a lot. One more round of applause for Chris Sargent. And that brings to an end our season here on Stars and Strikes. But a quick reminder 
that on Saturday at 12 noon, we will have our last actual new show of the season as we will have the New Hampshire State Candlepin Championships, the men's all events final. And of course, this last few weeks uh, over at the London Area Bowling Center, the first time for us, a chance to uh, televise the state championship. But here on the Tournament of Champions, uh, another terrific event as always. And uh, Chris Sargent, uh, certainly a worthy name to add to the list of titleists in this event. Well, absolutely. You can go right down the list from the first one, Bob Moran and, and Pat Pay and Paul and, and Chris. It goes on and on and on. And uh, who knows, next year one of these people might repeat or we'd have number eight. <laughs> in addition to this being the uh, finals of the Tournament of Champions, it also, by luck of the draw, happens to be our 400th show here on Stars and Strikes. We've been going for more than 11 years now, and we want to uh, thank all of our sponsors, all of you at home especially, for making this such a successful program over the years, and of course our terrific crew here at the Winds of New England for doing all the hard work to bring it all to you from Park Place Lanes in Wyndham. Don't forget the New Hampshire State Men's All Events Championship Saturday at noon from the Londonderry Bowling Center. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week, everybody.